A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Turkic roots of Koshe the Immortal, a dossier of the fairy villain, entertaining etymology, Konchak's personal file, say a word about the poor Koshe. A sorcerer who possesses supernatural power, the master of the underworld, or both. One of the most mysterious characters, always in the role of an anti-hero. And what is most interesting, this villain is forever remembered for quite a romantic reason. He's guilty of kidnapping beautiful girls. From ancient Russian tales and epics, we have the character known as Koshe the Immortal. And while the fairy tale happened, questions still arise. What kind of name is that? Why is he immortal? And moreover, is there a connection with the Turkic Erlik, the Kipchak Khan Konchak, and many others? But all in good time. In a certain kingdom, in the 30th state, there once lived. Epics were about Koshe the Immortal because he didn't die. Ancient people had a cyclic understanding of time. In other words, everything begins and dies, repeats itself and reappears again. It's not by chance that the image of Koshe is associated with the Kipchaks. Chapter 1. A Dossier of the Fairy Villain Koshe lived according to a fairy tale, indeed, in the 30th state. Sometimes he was moved to the underworld or to glass mountains. The occupation in the file of the villain is more often indicated as just being a king. He was busy with the usual kingly affairs, wars, hunting, and sometimes he hunted for beautiful girls. For a long time, people believed that that was a fictional character and they couldn't understand who Koshe was. He had numerous names, Koshe the Immortal, Kash, Koshun, Karachun, or even Karajin, a black spirit. The latter was from the underworld, a master of frost, cold, darkness, and death. In addition, Karachun also means winter solstice, the shortest day, a pagan holiday. Many Tengrian holidays were connected with the changes of day to night and from heat to cold. And the prototypes of the immortal villain, the ancient Slavonic Chernobog, and the ancient Turkic Erlik, both ruled the world of the dead, governed the passage of time. Erlik is even called the god of the past. People turned to Tengri with a request to give them a sense of time. But the Almighty told them that he would give them time, but death would come with it. And Erlik was the one who brought death. So that's how the sense of time appeared. And the legendary death of Koshe, which is hidden in an egg, reflected in ancient myths. In Turkic legends, the supreme god Tengri was born from a golden egg. Together with him, in place of the original chaos, the universe arose. In Slavic traditions, heaven and earth, day and night, good and evil, also appeared from a golden egg. Myths are, first of all, a world outlook. This is cosmology, in other words, science fiction, through which ancient people understood the world, nature, environment, heaven and earth around them. Alec wanted to steal the egg of the universe. In the image of a snake or a dragon, he crawls to the tree of life, Baiterek, on top of which there is an egg in the nest of the sacred bird Samruk, a story from ancient legends migrated to the fairy tales from childhood, Ertustuk. It is a symbol of life. That's when Yertostuk came out of this world tree. He saw that from under the roots, the dragon crawls out, and so it crawls up and wants to destroy the nest and he takes his bow and kills the dragon. It's quite logical, since the life is an egg itself, therefore by breaking it you can destroy life. 
It is interesting that villains and their lives, hearts and souls are hidden in an egg found in fairy tales of many countries. The Kuschev brothers are in Scandinavian, Celtic, Polish, Bulgarian and other legends. Chapter 2. Entertaining Etymology Even earlier than the 18th century, the legend was reworked for hundreds of years under the name of Koshe and appeared in Slavic tales. The word itself is mentioned in chronicles already in the 12th century. In the chronicles, there is a mention of Koshe. Koshe means an elective office for the period of a military campaign. In Ukrainian, Koshevoy means the foreman, the head of the Kosh. This word has taken root in many languages. Kosh, a settlement from Old Russian. In Belarusian, it means to spread a camp, Kashevats. When you translate this word from Turkic or Kazakh, it means a wandering person, a person who moves from one place to another. Another version comes from the word about the regiment of Igor. The same word is borrowed from the Turkic captive or slave, Kushi. The author of the word put this word on the Nogata. This is a small coin and a koshe, a coin four times more expensive than the smaller one. This is a kind of coin in which had its own value, and this cost is mentioned in the word about the regiment of Igor. So basically, a male slave is worth more than a female slave. In the meaning of captive, the word koshe also appears in the Ipatiev chronicle. In other interpretations, more attention is paid to the moment associated with a young man. And again, the riddle, the second mention of Koshe, in the word about the regiment of Igor, Igor is captured by the Polovsi. Here is the quote. The prince moved from the saddle of gold to the saddle of Koshe. In this case, Koshe is written as a proper name. Unfortunately, we don't have any written sources that reflect the Kipchak language of the 11th to 13th centuries. The only written source that allows one to see the Kipchak word is the word about the regiment of Igor. And when the name Koshe, written again with a capital letter, appeared on the pages of the historical monument for the third time, the fairy tale became reality. Shoot, the master Konchak, damned Koshe. And this is a very real name. Chapter 3, Konchak's personal file. The gates, now called Golden, were formerly called the South Gates. They were built in 1164 in the 12th century, and it was the only entrance to the city. Kievian Rus, temples, shopping bazaars, songs of wandering singers about military affairs and heroes and villains in epics. Many epic images were drawn from real people. Shark the Giant, he was also known under the name of Kudrevanko, Tsar or Sharukan, Konchik, Konchak. These are names inherited after the Polovtsian Khans. Accordingly, from Sharukan, there was a well-known dynasty of Kipchak rulers, the Sharukanido. His son was Otrok, and his grandson was Konchak. When Konchak was born is unknown, but presumably after Khan Atrak turned to his native land from Georgia, approximately in 1126 to 1130. After after David died, a lot of Kipchaks left the Caucasus area and returned to their native steppes. Subsequently, the legend about Evshan appeared. What did Sershan send after his relative, Kobzara, and he brought Evshan? grass, and he remembered his native steps.
for the first time, the son of a truck was mentioned in the Russian Chronicle in 1172 as a participant in one of the numerous civil uprisings. Judging by the text, Konchak is already a warrior with his own detachment. The chronicler calls him the leader of the Polovsi of the wild. Konchak played an important role in the politics of Eastern Europe. How a prototype from fairy tales really looked like is unknown. Was he thin and bony, as the classic image of Koshe was described? We don't have enough written material and no other sources so that we can do some kind of adequate reconstruction of the appearance of Konchak Khan. However, all the abnormalities were usually noted by contemporaries. For example, Khan Bonyak went down in history as being scabby. When a person who has physical abnormalities, especially a major leader, this has always been recorded in written sources. There are no such details about Khan Konchak. Another distinguishing feature of Koshe is stinginess. Pushkin, who worked with the Chronicles, writes, King Koshe withers over gold. But according to researchers, it is not because of greed. Most likely, he's just the keeper of common treasury, the so-called Kosh, the same Koshevoy, which is quite suitable for the personality of the Polovtsian Tsar or the Kipchak Khan Konchak. Once a person was on the pages of the Chronicle, it means he was a noble. It's believed that Konchak is one of the most famous Polovtsian Khans, imprinted in the traditions of friends and enemies. In the 13th century, he was remembered as a man who, with his cauldron, could scoop out a whole river and carry it easily on his shoulders. Truly magical powers Koshe possessed. It was an allegory about the fact that in the word about the regiment of Igor, he was able to cross a river with the cauldron on his shoulders. In fact, the cauldron itself was of symbolic significance. The cauldron is a symbol of the tribe, a symbol of a great kind. And he who owns this cauldron, he who owns the fire, he feeds people and is the breadwinner for the entire generation. And most importantly, this is why he's called immortal. The last time Khan Konchak was mentioned was in the Chronicles as a participant in the capture of Kiev in January 1203. When he died exactly is unknown. What about Konchak's burial site? Do you think it can be found? We cannot find the burial ground of Konchak or any of the Khans of that period. Khan Konchak lived for 101 years. At this time in Russia, more than six generations of people were born, grew up and died. And all these six generations remember Khan Konchak. Apparently, this influenced the wording of his immodest epithet, the immortal. Why was he known as immortal? Because we seem to be fighting and they still continue to attack. Well, the death and the egg is inspired by the past, or the thing is in the typical Turkic amulet. Tumar, the earliest, were of oval shape, say archaeologists. In such amulets, arrowheads were kept, and they resembled needles. Epilogue. Say a word about Kur Koshe. In his personal historical file, there are too many blank spots. An ambiguous hero of world history, Konchak, or damned Koshe, as he would be called, a so-called pagan. This is not a nickname in the Chronicle. Very many concepts that come to us from ancient written sources acquired their negative context much later. For example, Konchak was on friendly terms with the main character of the Chronicle, Prince Igor, and even brought him out of captivity. The son of Igor was betrothed to Konchak's daughter, the hero of the word about the regiment of Igor, like all states of the time. Peaceful relations were intermixed with war, and, so to speak, conflicts did not exclude the fact that they could be in ties of kinship. In 
In general, the time dictated its terms. Konchak was involved in the attacks on Kiev and other cities. Still, the pages of the chronicles begged to say a word about the poor Koshe.